So let's get to the last section. How to get out of the night. Well, the answer is quite simple, really. Do the opposite of what you do to get into the Nile. Right. Simple but hard to do, perhaps. But the first thing is breathe. Why breathe? Because when you breathe, you're allowing emotion to flow. That's the whole reason why we're in denial, is because we don't want our emotion to flow. So when we're breathing into our diaphragm and we're filling up our body with air, we're allowing our emotion to begin flowing. So that's great. What's next? Pray. Pray. Well, even before then, there was a, actually to set your intention. Yeah. Huh? Intention comes from the heart too, by the way. So, so look at your intention. If I get angry, I intend to get angry. I'm intending to get angry to get away from an emotion. And I want to get away from that emotion. Tell yourself the truth. This is what your intention is. I want to get away from my emotion, so I'll use anything in my power to do it. I'll use drugs, drink, whatever, or I'll use all these nice things that everybody judges as nice to get away from my emotion. I'll do whatever I can to get away from it. Yep, I'm just avoiding my emotion. You know, then go down the track of asking yourself, do you want to keep doing that? And set your intention, your feelings, to be different. Do you want to keep doing that? No, well, I don't want to keep experiencing the pain of avoiding my own emotion all the time. So set your intention differently. So when you... Sorry, can you do it intellectually or does it have to be... Always emotional. It yeah. can't be done intellectually. So if you're numb... Yeah. Which you might have a problem with, um, it's going to be hard to set the intention... Yes, very difficult. So firstly address the emotions that you're trying to shut down by being numb. No. Does that make sense? Let yourself feel the emotions that are underneath the numb. Yeah. Yeah. And even just let yourself feel numb, even. Yeah. You know, let yourself sit with that and tell yourself the truth about that first. And then go deeper than deeper and deeper and deeper into that emotion. I have the other problem that the anger hits me and I explode. Yeah, because you it's want like, to explode. It's, that, it's like that quick, it's, there's not even any thought, it's just... No, there is a thought, there is a, there is a feeling. There's a feeling of, I want to get away from why I want to protect myself, and the anger is the best and fast, fastest possible way for me to protect myself in this situation. So your anger is a choice. You follow me? Sorry? Is it a type of diversion? It's a diversion from the real thing, the real problem. So go into the anger, that's fine, go into the anger, punch, kick, whatever, get a bag and just get stuck into the anger and keep telling yourself why you're doing this it's deeper it's deeper than this it's deeper than this right but do it get involved with with actually expressing the emotion fully yeah. so what else is on the list pray be honest with god god stuff you i don't want to ever connect with you i'm sick of hearing about you right Say the truth if that's how you feel. Right? If that's how you're feeling about God, say it to God. Be honest with God. Be honest with God about your intention as well. If my intention is to deal with my emotions, set your intention and pray about that. I'm setting my intention. I want to make a contract with you, my Father. That every time I haven't set my intention, you show me. You know, set your intention with God. Pray about things with God. Let yourself identify within yourself what's going on and speak the truth, at least to God, about it. What else? Talk to your spirit friends. Yeah. Your spirit guides are there to assist you to deal with your emotions. They're there to assist you to grow spiritually. So talk to them about that. Get, enlist their assistance, even if you can't hear them. Say, I know you're there, I know you're going to help me, and what I'm going to try to do is take notice when you're telling me things. Yay! Our job's got, just got a bit easier. <laughs> Isn't that great? Boy, it'll be a breeze looking after her now. <laughs> Like you've got, you, yeah, you've got no idea how many spirits find it so hard at times. Like, 
particularly if they're not yet at one with God and know your guide, right? Because they go, oh, oh yeah, she's got it, she's got it, she's got it. Oh! <laughs> she's just lost it again, you know? Oh, no. And it's like, and when you get at one with God, you, you, you're not quite that, you know, emotionally involved with it. But when I say emotionally, but you're very emotionally involved with it, but you're not disappoint, as disappointed. But, but you still have these feelings, mm -hmm. oh, another opportunity lost, you know? Another opportunity lost. Oh, if you can work with your guides, <laughs> the spirit, our spirit friends are having a lot of fun at the moment. And if you can work with your guides, and then it makes their job a lot easier, both to protect you and to guide you. Yeah. So let let yourself understand that. You know, stop being in denial about that connection. Let yourself understand it. <laughs> All right. What's next? Open your heart. Okay. So the opposite to heart, heart, hard heartedness is to be open hearted. Right? So that means that I'm going to make a choice to be open to every emotion that comes to me in my life. And open and not judge it and just feel it. Making a choice to do that. That's an awesome choice if you can make that choice to do that. Things change very rapidly when you choose to do that. What's next? Observe your behaviour. Sorry? Observe. observe your behavior. Yeah, observe your behaviour. So even when you are totally shut down, totally numb, can't feel anything, you can at least observe your behaviour, can't you? Mm -hmm. So start observing it. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you first get up in the morning? Like, do you go for the cup of coffee? Oh, I must be denying something. Right? I'm allowed to deny it. <laughs> Observe your behaviour, but, but make you know these comments to yourself about what's going on. Observe what's happening with you. As you observe, you open up a part of your soul. As soon as you observe, you're now in a better state of truth. right? And you're opening up a part of your soul that, that then allows some emotion to dribble out. And initially it dribbles, and then it dribbles a bit more, and then it just starts to trickle, and then it starts to just flow a little bit more, and then it starts to run, and then it starts to squirt and gush, and then it starts, you know, and, then, and that's what happens emotionally to your soul, because you're opening and opening and opening and opening. But something's got to start it, right? Yeah. What's next? Be honest about your fears. Be honest. Back to the truthful one. Truth about fear. Fear is your false expectations appearing real, right? Yeah. So fear is what's blocking everything inside of you. If you're not truthful about it, then you can't access what's underneath it. Right? So oftentimes I ask an audience, how many of you are afraid of dying? And nobody puts their hand up. And then, then I ask the audience, how many of you cry when, when somebody dies? Most of them put their hand up. Why are you crying? You must be afraid of dying. Do you know what I mean? See, in the first state, we're not truthful. We weren't truthful with us. There's an emotion in us of grief. There's this fear associated with it. There's false beliefs appearing real to us associated with that particular belief that we need to release. And we're often not truthful about them. And if we're not truthful about them, we will never release them. Okay. What's next? Take. Okay, instead of avoiding your law of attraction, Start noticing it, right? Wow, <coughs> excuse me. Wow, that was amazing. You should have seen the other day, right? The other day, just in my left side of my body, I injured my feet, I injured my hand, and my eye started flickering, my left eye, and there's a little tiny growth that began on my left eye as well, a cataract growth. Just began, just out of nowhere. Gee, it's amazing, isn't it? That's my law of attraction. It all happened in one day. What do you reckon it might be about? Feminine. Is it left side, feminine. Your soulmate. Do my with how I'm seeing things, anger. It was about my, a lot of my soulmate stuff. So I need to get into that, right? But wow, law of attraction is awesome. <laughs> how many of you have awesome law of attractions? We all have awesome law of attractions. Everything's happening in our lives just to actually expose the emotions within it, right? Mm. Go for it. Understand that. 
And you know, the more you do that, the less the law of attraction needs to be harmful. Mm. Because it's the more you deny that the stronger law of attraction events occur. Mm. Right? You know what's fantastic? When the law of attraction changes. That is a and beautiful time, isn't change. it? Like you deal with the emotion and bang, you can feel the law of attraction change and within a few minutes everything starts changing on that issue around you. Mm. You think, wow, I've just <coughs> dealt with something. Wow, you know, it's like awesome. So the key is to bear in mind that your law of attraction is telling you when you've just dealt with something as well. Mm. And that's really great. When your law of attraction changes, you know, wow, I've just gone for a cause. That's a common statement nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go causal. Let's go causal. Want to go causal? What's next? Face the divine truth. Face the divine truth. You see, what we often do is we avoid the divine truth. In other words, we avoid what God's truth is on the matter. See that? So, you know, what is God's truth? Would God want you killing animals? What do you feel? You know, what, what would God's truth be? He created them. Do you, th do you think He creates something just for you to destroy it? Now, it's okay if it's going to be re replicating, if it's reproducing, that's fine. But if it's not going to be reproducing because you just killed it, is that so fine? From, from God's perspective, do you think? Would God want you to waste God's creative energy like that? You know, ask yourself these kind of questions. And at the start, you won't know what God wants, but you can work a lot of things out based on what you would want for your children, for example. Just by asking you, would I do this with my child? Well, wh why would I believe God would do it with me? Those kind of questions. Face the divine truth. Face what God's truth would be. Right? This is all progressive state too. You can't just do all of this all at once, can you? It's just a matter of working your way through these things. What's next? Follow your passions. Yeah. Start being dedicated to feeling your passions and making choices to live in them. You know, your life will change so much and almost all of your emotions will be confronted when you do that. But how many of you got a job you want? Right? How many of you haven't got a job you want? Now, if you gave up that job tomorrow, do you think you're going to be confronted with some emotions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So, if you did follow your passion, what would, what would be your, your ideal job? Let's say, a lot of people say, but I don't even know what my passions are. And that's okay. Don't stay in your current job, if that's the case, and work on the emotion of finding your passion. Why don't you want to know what your passions are? because I'm afraid to follow them, generally. That's why we don't want to even know what they are, right? I'm not facing my fears about that. So let myself face the fears. We mentioned that already. What's next? Follow the desires that are harmonious with love. Okay. Follow desires harmonious with love. In other words, do them. So, is having sex harmonious with love? Yeah, it depends. Well, it depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, if I'm basing it on an injury inside of myself and I'm needing some emotional satisfaction or neediness from the other person, is it now based on love? No. So don't do it. And ask yourself what's going on, what's the addiction? But what about if you're wanting sex and it is based on love? Well, then go for it. Even kinky sex? <laughs> oh, even kinky sex. <laughs> what's kinky sex? <laughs> No, I don't need education on that. <laughs> on the issue of sex, just as a side point, um, which I will be having a whole discussion one afternoon on sex at some point, but there are two really good books, uh, one for males and one for females, to read about sex that might confront you. Um, anyway, do you want to know what they are? Yeah. <laughs> How's that for enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody was saying anything. I just thought, oh, well, fair nobody wants to know. Bated breath. <laughs> All right. And the female, the female one is uh, called female ejaculation and the G spot. 
um, by Deborah. By the way, I don't necessarily agree with all the morals in these books, alright? By Deborah, I think it's Sundale or something like that. Deborah, I think it's Deborah her name is. Um, awesome book, um, I feel. Um, a really good book showing how f female sexual response and male sexual response for that matter are very much connected with your emotional state right and what's going on inside of you emotionally and there's ways for you as women to get a lot more out of your body from a sexual point of view than you're currently getting by actually triggering a lot of these emotions right and you'll enjoy the experience a lot more so for the male um, I think it's called uh, uh, no 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 um, <coughs> Something about male orgasm, actually. Well, I have to. I can't remember its title. Is it by Mantak Chia? No. Uh, Cultivating male sexual. No, it, it is by a some mates of his actually. Oh. Yeah. And I'm just trying to remember the name, but I can't. Michael Wynn? No, I can't no. remember the name. <coughs> it's about it's about uh, how a male can actually achieve orgasm without ejaculation. Uh, and also it's about how a male can cycle, like how yeah. you can cycle your, en your sexual energy through each other, the through moment. the emotional connection. Now, my feelings are all of this stuff uh, is when you'll be at one with God, you'll be automatically doing these things, right? But it's interesting to read these books just to open your mind and heart about what's possible even with regard to sexuality. Is it the multi-orgasmic? That's it. Male. The multi-orgasmic male, male is what it's called. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy. So, yeah. Sorry? Uh, yeah, no, it's a, I can't remember the name of the guy. Sorry. If you go to Mantak Chia's website, the book will be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who? Mantak Chia. Just search for the multi-orgasmic yeah. male as a book on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where are we up to with our uh, things Last that we need one. to Sorry? Last one. All Thank of you, you love sex, eh, man? It's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay, that's one. Take actions that focus on opening up yourself emotionally. All right. So, take action. Take action. 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 So what do we do? Often what we do is we talk about this so much and we don't do anything. Why? Because we're afraid. See, when you take action, automatically your emotions will be triggered. Right? But where, where won't they? If you go home tonight and tell your partner all the secrets you've been holding from them for the last 30 years, wow. don't you think a few emotions will be <laughs> They think that. So go for it. It's going to open you up really well. Right? But if you don't act, of course you're not going to be creating events that will trigger you emotionally. You see, a lot of times we sit in our nice little comfortable cocoon life, which is really, in the end, a little prison of our own construction. Right? With all these bars around, and we say, oh, I'm pretty comfortable, but we're also so afraid we can't walk out of the prison. Right? When you start taking action, what will happen is, all of a sudden in your life, all different things will be confronted emotionally. And that's really pretty powerful, isn't it? When you do that. Take action. Don't be afraid to take action. Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully that's uh, helped you maybe start to look at your own forms of denial and what's going on inside of your soul. And, uh, and hopefully, as you work through those things, you'll start creating a soul space, which is one of the discussions I have separately to this, about how to actually work through and create positive things going on in your life, right? To actually create a soul space where you can experience all of these emotions. So at the moment, the way the world's constructed is that we are very, very against emotional expression. Right? And what we need is we need leaders who are going to actually be for emotional expression who are going to be really positive about emotional expression. So what we need to do at some point in ourselves, if, if we want the world to change, we need to start changing. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
we need to change. And if we do <laughs> actions with all of these things in connecting with God, our soul condition is going to expand. And it's going to change the world, just our changes that we make inside of ourselves. One person can change the world. Just one. So if one person can change the world, what do you think a hundred can do? Or a thousand? But we need to have that positive thing of doing it. Taking action and getting going and doing it. Instead of just talking about it. And many of you are feeling these wonderful feelings when you come of feeling positive and feeling like connections with your soul and a lot of your questions getting answered, right? All of that's happening. But ask yourself now, am I putting this into practice in my own life? Because when you do that, that's when all of the emotional errors will be confronted and it's also when you're putting love into action and you change the world by putting love into action. Yeah.